Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I am getting ready to quilt the Home Again quilt from a sew along that the Fat Quarter Shop did on my new King Quilter 2 Elite. And I've got the top on already. I have already basted a plumb line across horizontally so that I know that the top is on straight. And in this video, I wanted to show you how I'm going to base the quilt on and then how I'm going to stabilize the quilt by running a long basting stitch throughout the entire quilt before I get started. This quilt finishes at 74 by 94, so it's pretty big and it's really easy for quilts to shift and move around and kind of go one direction, kind of like when you're trying to roll aluminum foil and it all gets off to the one side. That's easy for that to happen. So it's really important that you baste a quilt when it, you've got something this big. For your benefit, I have changed out my thread so that it is a dark blue and I still have the regular um, off-white in the bobbin, but I put the dark blue on to make it easier for you to see. I have Pro Stitcher on this King Quilter too. There's a couple of different ways that you can baste your quilt and you can either use the basting feature that's on the little screen that came with the machine or you can uh, use the baste in the Pro Stitcher. You can drop your stitches down to like five stitches per inch. A lot of people like to do that. You can go into the basting mode so that like this says B2. This is the gap that's in between each stitch. So you can do four inches gap, you can do two inches gap, you can do a one inch gap. So when it comes to basting the quilt edges that is going to be underneath the binding, I want to do a, a, a gap of one inch per. Okay, I'm going to do a needle down, needle up and pull up my bobbin thread and then I'm just going to press the go button up here on the handlebar and I'm ready to go and so I'm going to get a gap of one inch in between each basting stitch and I'm right up near the edge of the quilt so this blue thread won't be seen. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. Needle down, needle up. Get my bobbin thread. Move my pin. I'm making sure the back half of that foot is off the quilt. Okay. Couple of lock stitches. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is to stabilize this quilt. So I want to stabilize it so that I can stitch an entire pattern without having to pull my stabilizing stitches. So if I go into File, Design, Open, and what I'm after is actually on my uh, the D drive, which is my USB, and there it is. I'm going to open that. I want to, so this is 10.75 by 11.97. So 10 and 3 quarters by 12, let's say. Okay, so I need to be at least 12 and a half or so inches away from my basting stitch. I'm just going to measure down like 12 and a half from that edge. Just use a quilting ruler. I'm going to put this up at the top of the fabric where the last basting stitch was. And actually, 12 and a half is about right here. Okay, that's good enough. So that way I can go ahead and stitch all of one pass across this without having to pull my basting stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and run it, not in a ditch, but just kind of right through the edge there. And I'm going to eyeball this. And then I want to put two stitches 
I want, I'm sorry, I want two inches between each basting stitch. Okay. So I'm going to, yeah, like right here is good. Needle down, needle up. Okay. And I'm just, I'm not going to do a lock stitch because I'm going to be pulling this out, but I do want it to stabilize. So I'm ready to go and I'm just going to go. And this is just, this will pull out super quick. And it's just stabilizing the quilt so it doesn't get any ideas about shifting around on the back. All right, that's it. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to roll the quilt now. And I need to pull all my pins. So now I'm going to roll the quilt, base down the sides again, and then go ahead and stabilize the next 12 inches. So I continued on stabilizing on down the quilt about every 12 and a half to 13 inches until I got all the way down to the end and then I ran the basting stitch around the bottom of the quilt top and fully enclosed the quilt sandwich together. So the rail that the quilt top is normally attached to was never in use. I hope that was helpful. If you've got really large quilts or maybe you've got a quilt that has got some waviness to it, stabilizing the quilt before you ever get started can be a huge, huge help to keep your mind sane so that you can actually get it done and it comes out the way you want it to. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. We will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.